In this lesson, we'll explore some of the indirect illumination properties found on most Softimage materials. So within Softimage, uh, pretty much all of the materials that are listed underneath this top grouping of materials all share the same common uh, parameters as far as controlling their indirect illumination behavior. So let's take a look at this on just this simple torus object. I'll go ahead and select this and Alt, right click, and go to Inspect Material. So with this property page pulled up, we can jump over into the Indirect Illumination tab. And just to see what this looks like, let's go ahead and draw out a render region and just render this out. So within this Indirect Illumination area, we have first off the control for global illumination and final gathering. Now this really won't uh, show any kind of an effect until we have some sort of a global illumination method turned on. So just to demonstrate this, go into Render regions and go into all options. I'll go ahead and jump over into the final gather tab and enable final gathering. Okay, so now with that enabled, I'll go back to my property page and now we should be able to see some kind of an effect here. So what this will al allow us to do is essentially come in and find the objects that are using a certain material and if we decide maybe for whatever reason we want uh, the indirect illumination to look a little bit different, we can just simply come in and adjust that radiance. So for example, right now with this set to 1, it's essentially receiving all the effect of my final gathering. But if I were to come in here and drop this radiance all the way down to 0 or down to black, you can see that now everything in my scene is receiving this indirect illumination except for this piece of geometry, or really anything that's happened to be using this type of material. Also I could start to come in here and let's say I maybe wanted the indirect illumination tinted just a little bit differently on that object. I can come back to my radiance and do the same. So really this does become very very useful if you have uh, certain situations where uh, maybe everything in your scene looks good but except maybe one object could maybe stand to be a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. You can just come in, find your material, adjust that radiance and you're good to go. So as far as the uh, incandescence we also have the ability to actually uh, essentially make this object look as if it were glowing. So if I were to set the value for that back to 1 just temporarily. Now let's come back to the incandescence and you notice that the intensity right now is set to 0. But as we start to bring this intensity up this object starts to become brighter and brighter to the point where as we start to get closer to 1 it really almost kind of looks as though this object is illuminated or lit up. We can also start to come in and give this object maybe a little bit more coloration and you notice in my case, because I do have uh, my final gathering turned on, that the final gathering is actually picking up on this and making some of these areas a little bit brighter, uh, kind of close to this piece of geometry. So it really does try to behave as though it is some kind of a luminous surface now. And we should be able to come in, and even if the uh, slider right now stops at 1, we should be able to come in here and continue increasing this if we do want something that is maybe a little bit brighter than what we have currently. And you can really start to see now where uh, we're starting to get something that is a little bit more like the appearance of some, some kind of an illuminated surface. So if we want to, we could go ahead and turn that off. Now finally, we have the ability to include what's called translucency. Now translucency are, uh, would be surfaces that are really not necessarily transparent, but they still allow light to pass through. So this would be things like cloth, uh, paper is another good example, uh, jade, wax, things like that. So to demonstrate this, uh, let me go ahead and jump back over to this little memo cam right up here. Just left click on that. Now let's select this curtain piece of geometry and let's go to its material. So Alt, right click, inspect material. Again, go back to the indirect illumination. Let's draw out a render region just so we can see what this looks like right now. And maybe just to keep my render moving a little bit faster, I'll go back and disable my final gather. There we are. Now back to the translucency. What we should see now as we start to dial this up, that we start to see now a little bit more of that translucent effect start to come through. So you can see that the surface again is not really necessarily transparent, but it is now starting to allow some of this light to come through. Now this effect really works best for surfaces that are going to be just single sided. Uh, so things like grids, uh, or really any surface that really doesn't have any kind of thickness to it at all. Again, you can see in this situation that this is really just a single 
uh, kind of plane or a grid type surface. Now this will work just fine with uh, surfaces that do have thickness, but the effect is going to be uh, much less noticeable and takes a little bit more uh, work to get it looking just right. So that's a look at some of these indirect illumination features that are found on most all soft homage material types.